Hey guys, how's it going? Back again today with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing how to do this super cool transition. I call it the Polaroid transition. It's been done in like Sam Kohler videos. I've seen it done in a lot of other sources. It's a very popular transition to use and actually surprisingly easy to do. Uh, so before we get started, there's a couple things we're gonna need. One thing is obviously gonna be a Polaroid picture, an old Polaroid picture that you're uh, not too attached to. Uh, the second thing you're gonna need is green construction paper. It doesn't have to be green, but green's obviously the easiest color because it's the least common color and easiest to key from. So you wanna get like a nice green screen color green. Um, I just picked this up from my local dollar store. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that there's a, the, the dollar symbol on it. But yeah, so this, this, this whole big sheet cost me a dollar. Really gonna need a little bit. You don't need this big by any means, but it's just the easiest thing for me to find. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Polaroid picture, measure the length and width of where the photo lies within the Polaroid picture. You're gonna go over to your piece of paper and then you're gonna trace out the dimensions on the paper and then cut it out. And then you guessed it, you're gonna glue that right on top of your Polaroid picture. And by the end, you should have something that looks kind of something like this. So from that, let's get into the editing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the effects panel and then we're gonna search for something called Ultra Key. And then from that, we're just gonna drag and drop it onto our clip. So then, yeah, really simple, the next thing we're gonna do after that is click on the eyedropper tool in this key color section. And then we're gonna select our uh, photo there. So then from there, the next thing we're gonna go is we're gonna go down to the matte generation. Matte generation is the, where you can tweak to make sure you get the most effect out of your color key. Uh, so what we're gonna do, the biggest thing you wanna look at is tolerance, because that'll be how much color it selects. And then from there, you can play with some other things. And while you're editing, it's usually a good idea to like edit with the clip that you wanna to transition to. So drag that underneath the clip that you're gonna to transition to and then play around with the settings until it starts to look good. Another really good setting too, if your colors seem off, is to play with the range under spill suppression. Uh, tweaking that is usually really helpful for getting like your colors accurate without them switching too much. So now that we have that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our clip that we're gonna transition to, drag it underneath the layer where we just keyed out the photo, and then we're gonna just position it where we want. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some movement to our photo, add a little bit of a pan in, and then we're gonna zoom all the way into the photo, and then the clip's gonna start there. And since we know that this is where we want the clip to start, we're gonna go to the beginning of the frame where you want it to start, press the right arrow key once, and that should, that'll bring us over one frame. From there, we're gonna hit Command K. And if you don't know any of these hotkeys, I just made a video about hotkeys to use to speed up your editing process, so go check this out if this seems uh, foreign to you. And then since we have this, again, one frame sequence, all we're gonna do is we're gonna change the speed by going Command R and change the speed to 0.1 of a percent. All right, so now that we have our frame set up how we want, we're gonna add some motion to do that. And to do that, the easiest way to do that is we're gonna select both clips, right click, and we're gonna nest them. So now that they, if you change one clip, they will move together. So see if we move the position or the scale, they'll uniformly stay together, which is a huge plus for us. You can do them independently if you want, but it is a lot more work, and this is the quick and easy way to do it. Uh, so then from that, we're gonna add some motion to the clip. So we're gonna click on the scale, go along for about four seconds before we transition and add a scale of about 120. Something I always like to do to my keyframes is I like to auto bezier them just to make it a bit smoother. Um, so I will add that in here. So then you'll see if we play back uh, the, the scale going up here. Makes it look like the camera's approaching when in reality it is a still clip. And then from that, we're gonna, after about four seconds at the end of our keyframe here, we're gonna bring the clip over here and then we're going to reset the scale and position. Since it is a 4K clip and this is a 1080p video, I just have to set the scale to 50. So it takes up the whole frame. So then between the two clips, we're just gonna do a zoom transition. It's a really transition to use. And there's tons of presets out there, tons of tutorials on how to do it. Uh, I have a preset that I use where I can just drag and drop, make it super easy. Um, so I'm just gonna select between these two clips, go about, maybe five keyframes key in either direction. So I'm going to my presets, my replicate mirror, and my zoom in. It's, so you zoom in, and fast zoom in, and you're in the clip. 
Uh, one thing that I like to do, uh, which is kind of a bit stylistic, is I could go to the uh, effect fantasy and go look for Lumetri color. So here it is. And then for this, we're actually going to go into our nested sequence. We're going to double click. And then we're going to click on our photo, which we're transitioning to, which is this DJI clip. And we're going to drag the Lumetri color onto the DJI clip. And then from that, uh, I'm going to go to the creative and add a faded film. I'm going to change the saturation and the vibrance a little bit as well. And so near the beginning of the video, I want it to look more like a photo, which will be more faded. Let's vibrant. Maybe about up minus 100 and much less saturated. So something like this. So we have all these effects making it look older, less clear, uh, almost looks more like a photo uh, than, a, than a video clip right now. And then we're going to go to right until the end, maybe about, this is about four seconds. Uh, and then over here, we're going to add new keyframes and then we're just going to turn these all back to zero or what they were before. And again, I'm going to auto bezier them. Now if we go through here quickly, you can see, looks like the photo's kind of coming to life. And so if we go back into our original clip now and see the playthrough before the transition, you'll see it comes into to life and then fully again there when we transition to it. Right on, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a really simple and quick way of doing it. There's a lot more complicated way of doing it in Adobe After Effects, which is a lot more work, but I think it does, the result is a little bit different stylistically, um, maybe better in your opinion. Uh, but this is a really quick and easy way of doing it in Adobe Premiere. Uh, so again, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did and you feel so inclined, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be trying to make more of these tutorials, weekly at least, if not bi-weekly. Um, and again, I'm still learning here, so if this is anything that you want me to dive into more detail, or if you feel I'm like missing out on something, uh, just let me know in the comments down below, and I will try my best to improve. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching, if you've made it this far. So, peace.